Greetings everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and as usual we're glad to bring you those things that the Lord have uh, laid on our hearts to share with you all. Amen. So we of course uh, for the last couple of weeks we had been talking about um, sinners need to repent. And so when we go look at the book of First John, the third chapter of the book of First John, uh, going right along with that is what we've talked about yesterday concerning have you seen God so the third chapter of the book of first John and verse 6 it says whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him you see that and so there that that lets us know that if you're still sinning, it, it, part of it is because you have not seen God. If you're still living in sin, you have not seen the Lord. And so then we went from there. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. We're going to continue to talk from there just a little. The sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. And it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord, when the sixth chapter of the book of uh, Isaiah, it says, Sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, one, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So, <clears throat> look at what he says there again when he saw the Lord he saw the glory of God and look what he says woe is me now the first thing he noticed was himself now this is the order of any any prophet but especially you know anybody that's a believer when you see the Lord you'll notice yourself he says I for I am undone woe is me for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. See what he said there? He said he is undone. And he only names one thing that's wrong with himself. Unclean lips. He didn't have a whole list of things to name. And we have to say this. That's all it takes is one thing. That's all. The Lord tells us to be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. How many things does God have wrong with him? So when he saw the Lord, he noticed that he had unclean lips. He saw that holiness there, and it made him reflect on his tongue, in other words, his mouth. That's all it took. He, wasn't, he didn't say grace covers it. Or, I got everything else right, and the Lord is working on me with this one. He said, woe is me. In other words, when you see that word woe, you can just think about trouble. I'm in trouble. Look at what he says there. For I am undone. Everybody see that? He didn't, so... Many people, when they, when they think about sin, they think about it from the other end. Well, praise the Lord, I'm not what I used to be. Or, I've accomplished so much already. He said, I am undone. Like the, the, the sample we used yesterday, I haven't reached that island yet. I haven't got to the finish line yet. So, I am incomplete. And it only took one thing for him to be undone. That was unclean lips. Look at what he says. 
because I am a man of unclean lips. So he recognized himself, and then look what he says. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So he's talking about folks that he's <clears throat> always around. Now let me make this clear. You'll become what you're always around. So he recognized that in himself, and he recognized what part of the problem was. Most of the time when people have unclean lips, it's because of the ex exact same reason. They're dwelling with people, um, in the midst of people with unclean lips. You stop gossiping if you didn't have somebody to gossip to. Somebody that would sit there and listen to it. You see that? So he says that I dwell in the, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So let's not just talk about lips, unclean lips. Let's talk about it all. Sin has to have an incubator. Something that it can grow in. Something that will promote it. Much like righteousness and holiness has to have the same type of atmosphere. And so when you're talking about sin, sin dwelling on the inside of you, there has to be something to help it to grow, to help it to fester in your life. You have to have some type of support system for sin. You see that? The Bible tells us make no provision for the flesh. And what, is, what it's saying is make no provision for the sin. In other words, don't accommodate it and one way people accommodate sin is by getting people around them that will help them in their sin that's the reason why darkness don't want to have any fellowship with light and light shouldn't want to have fellowship with darkness because they go against one another they can't be the, they can't be in the same room at the same time you can walk into a dark room. When you turn the light on, darkness goes somewhere. You see that? It flees. It goes somewhere. You see? And so, when you're talking about sin, you're talking about having an atmosphere for it. Many people sin because they have set an atmosphere for it. And many people continue to sin even when they don't want to sin because they have not removed the atmosphere that they have set for it. I want you to think about something. Worldly people are something, you know, and you can, you can uh, understand a little bit better if you just pay attention to certain things. When a lot of times people want to be intimate with whoever they're with, especially worldly people, they will play some music that has to do with intimacy. What are they doing? Setting the atmosphere. They're not playing gospel music. Nobody's thinking about intimacy like that, you know, when, when the Bible is being read aloud or when gospel music is playing. So people will put music that has to do with intimacy. Setting the atmosphere for what it is they're going to do. You see that? And a lot of times, even when people want to, people got it in them to do certain things like, you know, like crime, murder, or things like that. The devil's got all kind of music out there for you to set the atmosphere for that. To get you angry enough to do something you shouldn't be doing. And you may not even understand. It may be in your mind, oh, I just like hardcore music but you have to ask yourself why do you like it what is it that the devil is doing why is it I mean think about it you don't see folks out robbing people or doing drive-bys listening to gospel music I remember years ago there was a, a CD out and the name of the CD was music to drive by in other words, this if you want to do a drive-by, this is the CD you put in your, your player, CD player in your car. And that's all they talked about was killing and getting back at somebody and things like that. As I'm telling you, you set the atmosphere 
You see, you set the atmosphere for what you want to do. You see that, and so that, and so that's what Isaiah here is saying. I dwell among people, in the middle of people, in the midst of people, with unclean lips. It was a support system, and yes, sin does have a support system. And so you may say, well, Brother Bolden, some of that I can't help, you know, as far as I work with people that way. Well, that's why you need to be prayerful before you go into work and after you leave work that that spirit don't get on you or go home with you. You see that? So he says there in, in, in Isaiah the 6th chapter, the 5th verse, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So he's talking about the atmosphere that is set. And notice he's also able to see where other people are after he has seen the Lord. So what happens when you see the Lord? You see God through, you see yourself through God's eyes. You, you see yourself the way that God sees you at the present moment which is why Isaiah had this urgency and which is why he said woe is me before then he didn't know what kind of trouble he was in he thought well, I'm a prophet of the Lord I've been prophesying for years I'm fine God's using me but when he saw the Lord then he was able to see himself through God's eyes and because of that now I can see where my problem is the same mouth that I'm using to prophesy to people, I'm using it to speak perverse things, twisted things. You see that? And now, and so since I can see myself, I see other people as well. Now, when God shows us other people, of course, it's not to look down on them. It is for us to have compassion, to want them to change. But you know, of course, the devil is working on the other end. So when you preach righteousness to people, they they mistake your passion for them as far as living a righteous life they'll take that as judgment well I guess it is judgment if you don't want to change you know one of the things that ministers have to do and it's one of the hardest things to do is to convince people that something is wrong and that they don't need to be doing it especially if they call themselves believers if people want to hold on to sin they don't want to hate sin which lets you know they don't love God if you love God, you're going to hate sin, and that's really the bottom line. You're not going to want to be in what you're in, and, and since you don't want to be in it, you're not out parading it around. You may say, well, Brother Bowden, it seems like you're always touching on homosexuality, but I want you to think about something, well, especially with that sin. What makes that such a bad thing? What makes that such an abomination and disgusting? Because I'm going to just flat out tell you, it's flat out disgusting. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That, you're nasty. And you need, to, you need the Lord. But what makes it even worse is exactly what Paul tells us in the book of Romans. Not only are they doing it, but they have pleasure in other people that are doing it. In other words, they're promoting it. So what makes it bad is it's, it's a sin that you're not ashamed of. You have parades that go on all over the world for that sin. Nobody's like, when was the last time you heard of an adultery parade? An adultery pride flag? A liar parade? Nobody's out there parading lies and parading and being glad about being a liar. You don't have lie pride, liar pride, or anything like that. That's what makes that such a, a, a bad thing. You're parading with it. Most people that are out committing adultery or fornicating, they're not out broadcasting it. And it's a slap in God's face. You see that? It's a slap in God's face. So that's one of the hard things when you're a minister to try to get people to see is that they need to hate sin and the way you hate it is when you love God and when you love God and you hate sin you're not parading it around you're not proud of it you're not wanting to do it you want to be delivered and you're glad when somebody come to you and tell you hey that's not of the Lord you need to change 
when you bring that to a homosexual, they're not telling you, oh, I know that. I know I need to change. Can you pray for me? No, that's not the conversation. The conversation is, well, you know, what about liars? Or what about this? Or what about that? It's like they're always bringing in some other kind of sin to justify themselves. No, we're talking about that now. What about you? What does a liar have to do with your soul? And even Christian folks will do that. The so-called Christian folks. You bring up homosexuality, they're going to bring up every other sin. Well, what about this? This is just as bad. Yeah, all y'all going to hell, but we're talking about you today. If you don't change, that's where you're going. Right along with the liars and all of that. So you bringing up other sin to excuse your sin does not excuse your sin. And when you have seen the Lord, and you could really see yourself through his eyes, you no longer want to be attached to it. No longer want, to, want that attached to you. And I'm going to tell you, if you could really see what kind of spirit is behind that stuff that you're doing, you wouldn't want to have any part of it. The devil have blinded your eyes to those spirits that's operating through you to cause you to do ungodly things like you do. But you wouldn't want to have any part of it. If you could see in the spirit realm and see that spirit that's really riding you, you'd get away from it. You see that? So he says in verse 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. In other words, the atmosphere for it. I, I have that support system that, that keeps me in that place. You see that? He says, For mine eyes have seen the, the King, the Lord of hosts. So he's gone back to and reminding us of why he can see himself now. Whereas before he couldn't see it. Now he's telling us, why could I, how, why do I know now that I'm a man of unclean lips? And not only that, but I hang around people and I'm around people of unclean lips. How do I know it? Because I've seen God. You cannot tell me that you've had an encounter with God and don't mind living in sin. There's something wrong there. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Everybody see that? And so when he saw God, then he could see himself and see what condition he was in. And once he saw the condition he was in, his heart changed towards that. He didn't make excuses for that condition. His heart changed for, towards it. And what happened next? When God sees that you no longer want that sin attached to you, that's when he'll send help. That's when your help come. But I'm going to tell you, if you make an excuse for sin, you'll be the same person you were five years ago. It'll always be coming up. You'll always be falling into the same trap because some kind of way is everybody else's fault. Notice Isaiah didn't say, well, Lord, you know, I dwell among people with unclean lips. That's the reason why I am the way that I am. And, and you got me prophesying to these people, so what am I supposed to do? He didn't blame nobody else. He, he saw himself first. It wasn't, you know... I'm this way because they are that way. He saw himself first. And I'm telling you, when we truly see ourselves, and God knows our heart, because we can say with our mouths we don't want to be a certain way. But if you're that way five years later, you want to be that way. Because when God really knows that you don't want to be that way, he sent help the same way he sent it to Isaiah. He'll work a miracle on your behalf and change that about you. You see that? But it's a matter of seeing God so that you can see yourself, so that your heart can change towards what it is that you're holding on to. Amen. So we want to say thank you all for joining us today. And we pray that something has been said that has been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast. Have a blessed day.